Hello everyone! Welcome to Decor Art Channel. In this video, best under stairs storage ideas and how to build an under the stairs storage unit. Like the video and subscribe to Decor Art Channel to get our new updates daily. Need extra storage space? You might already have it right under your feet. Builders rarely utilize the space under a staircase. It's much easier to just wall it in than to make custom pullouts. But you can reclaim that wasted space in a couple of weekends. I built three pullouts to store everything from shoes to coats and backpacks. You can customize this design to get just the type of storage space you need. Tools required to HFT. Level, rad nail gun, cock gun, circular saw, combination square, drill driver, framing square, orbital sander. Putty knife, table saw. Materials required, 1 by 6 by HFT. Poplar 3, 1 minus 1 quarter in dot trim screws, 1 minus 1 quarter in dot wood screws to bin. And to minus 1 quarter bin. Construction screws, 1 half by 48 by 96 in. Baltic birch plywood a 2, 18 a gauge brad nails, 5 eighths in, 1 minus 1 quarter bin and two of in. Three quarters by 48 by 96 VIN. Veneer core birch plywood, one thirty for VIN. Extra heavy duty drawer slides 500 pounds, 3 PR. Fast tack construction adhesive, primer, one QT. Satin enamel paint, one QT. Shims, spackling compound, or wood filler, waterborne polyurethane, two QT. Project step by step. Step 1. Open the wall. Pry off the baseboard, then remove the drywall. I cut out a small section of drywall first, so I could see inside and verify that there were no wires or other obstructions in the cavity. If there is an existing outlet, you'll have to relocate it. Step 2. Reframe the opening. Remove the studs, salvaging what you can for reframing. Attach a stud at each end of the opening and divide the remaining space into three openings of equal width. Cut and attach the two inner studs, making sure they're plumb and accurately placed. Step 3. Build the drawer slide supports. Assemble the T-shaped drawer slide supports using glue and finish nails. Then add one minus one quarter bin. Wood screws for strength. The available depth under my stairs was 36 inches, so I used 30 for VIN. Drawer slides. Subtracting 3 minus 1 half VIN. For the stud plate left 30 minus 1 half VIN. For the slide support length. Step 4. Install slide supports. Attach the slide supports directly behind the studs using construction adhesive and 2-inch screws. Use a framing square to make sure the supports are square to the bottom plate so the drawer slides won't bind. Step 5. Add furring strips and trim. I chose inset drawer faces, but wanted their faces and trim flush with the skirt board. Note, this meant adding one half in. Furring strips to the adjoining wall stud and floor stud plate before attaching the trim. The drawer faces cover the other three studs, so they didn't need furring strips, just in. Thick trim. Step 6. Make a template. Building for this angled opening was tricky. A full-size plywood template of the opening proved helpful for calculating drawer and drawer front sizes. Step 7. Assemble drawer boxes. To calculate the drawer width, measure the opening, then subtract the thickness of two drawer slides. Make the drawers as deep as the drawer slide length. Make each drawer box 3 quarters in. Less than the height of the opening for 3 eighths in. Clearance top and bottom. Glue and nail the boxes together, adding trim screws later for strength. Step 8. Race off frame stock. Applying a hardwood frame to the face of 3 quarters in. Plywood is an easy way to simulate a frame and panel drawer front. Rip the frame stock to width. Then resaw it into one quarter in thick stock. Pro tip: set your saw's fence to in, then raise the blade to cut just over halfway through the board. Make the first pass, flip the board at keeping the same side against the fence, and finish the cut. 
Use a push stick as you get close to the blade. Note, you can skip this step if you can find one quarter bin. Thick lumber at your local home center. Step 9 Sand out any saw marks. Sand out any saw marks with a random orbit sander. Pro tip, a new or newly sharpened saw blade all but eliminates them. Mark the sanded surfaces for gluing so the factory sides face out in the drawer fronts. Step 10. Apply frames. Cut the drawer fronts to size and the frame parts to rough length. Mark, cut, and attach the frame pieces using glue and 5 8 vin. Rad nails. Pro tip for accuracy. Instead of taking measurements, hold each piece in place, then mark and cut them to length. Run the two vertical sides or styles long to hide the end grain of the horizontal rails. Step 11. Fill the edges. Fill any voids and gaps on the drawer front edges with putty or spackling compound. Fill the nail holes on the faces as well. Step 12. Sand the drawer fronts. Once the filler has dried, sand the drawer fronts. I used 120 egg grit sandpaper on a block for the edges and a random orbit sander for the large surfaces. Soften any sharp edges. Step 13. Paint the drawer fronts. Prime the frames, then apply two coats of paint. Pro tip, because I used pre-finished plywood for the drawer fronts, I didn't need to prime them. I just reduced the gloss with 120 egg grit sandpaper before painting. The backs of the drawer fronts only need paint around their perimeter, about 3 inches in from the edge, as they're mostly covered by the drawer boxes. Step 14. Install the drawers. Set the slides 3 sixteenths high in back from the face of the finished furring strips and attach them to the supports, making sure they're level. These heavy-duty slides don't come apart, so the mounting procedure is a bit different. With the slides extended, set the back end of the drawer on a 3 8 pin. Shim in the opening. Then using a 2 by 4 inch shims, level the drawer and attach the slides to it. Step 15. Position the drawer fronts. Drive a couple of screws through each drawer from the inside until the points poke through. Set the drawer fronts onto shims to create an equal gap, top and bottom, and lean them into the opening. Adjust the gaps around the drawer front by sliding it right or left and raising or lowering it with shims. Note, I usually eyeball the gap, but you can mark the cap on a shim and use it as a gauge for all the fronts. Once the gap is set, Push the drawer front against the protruding screws, leaving two indents. Drill pilot holes at these points. Step 16. Attach the drawer fronts. Drill and countersink holes where the marking screws were, then attach the drawer fronts with 1 minus 1 quarter VIN. With screws. Verify that the gap is still correct, then add more screws. Note, I used 8 on the large front, 6 on the middle one, and 4 on the small one. Step 17. Install the push latches. Attach the push latch in its approximate location using the two oblong holes. Stick the latch plate magnetically to the end of the fully extended latch. Push the drawer front in until it contacts the plate. Wish you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.